Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of a Maths. Here we're looking at resolving forces so we can answer questions from exercise 5a. So resolving forces is a really important concept for A-level mechanics. It takes any force that's been applied to a particle at an angle and then it splits up that force into different directions so that we can work out acceleration in a specific direction even when our force is being applied at an angle. So. Um, if we start with the basics, and a horizontal force has no effect on an object um, in the vertical direction. So if we apply a 10 newton force in this direction, it has no effect on the uh, particle or the brick that's on this table in the vertical direction. And a vertical force has no effect on the object in the horizontal direction. So if you were to apply a force of 10 newtons upwards, that would not move this brick left or right. So it's really important that with forces, we have two dimensions. We have the vertical direction. And if the forces are just being applied in the horizontal direction, there's not going to be any movement in that vertical direction. And the same vice versa for horizontal and vertical um, in this case. Uh, however, uh, a force at an angle will have both effect will have some effect in both the horizontal and the vertical components. So in this case here, we have a treat this as a string that's attached to the one side of this brick and it's pulling it at an angle of twenty degrees with a force of ten newtons. Now what we can do is we can split this up into what we call the horizontal component and the vertical component. So some of this 10 newton force will be acting in the horizontal direction and some of this 10 newton force will be acting in the vertical direction. And you can see how this is going to happen by the shape that we've just created by these three arrows. We've got a right angled triangle here, so we're going to be using uh, sine, cos and tan to help us work out the horizontal component and the vertical component. So if we remember, this is the opposite side, the adjacent side. The force that we want to resolve is always the side that goes on the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. Um, so we're going to use Sokar or Toa. Um, so for this side over here, it's going to be 10 sine 20. And for the side on the adjacent side, it's going to be 10 cos 20. Okay, so uh, we can then work these values out. Um, so the force on the vertical components will be equal to the value of 10 sine 20, and the force on the horizontal components will be equal to 10 cos 20. None of these two forces should be bigger than the 10 Newton force originally. They should be smaller than that. Uh, but yeah, that's how we work out the horizontal and vertical components in this case. So a force can be split up into horizontal and vertical components using trigonometry and that's what we're going to be looking at mostly in this chapter. So in this question here we have find the components of the each force in the x and the y directions and hence write your force in the form pi plus qj uh, newtons. So in this case here we're going to create our right angle triangle and it's always nice to use different colours here uh, for your right angle triangle. Make sure your force is always on the hypotenuse of your right angle triangle. So in this case this red line here is going to be 9 cos 40 and the vertical component there is going to be uh, y, so 9 sine 40. And we can work out these values as 6.89 and 5.79. It would make sense that the red component has more value because it's, uh, if we think about the angle, it's been uh, pulled more to the right than it is vertically upwards by this angle of 40 degrees. At the angle of 45 degrees, these two forces should be equal, the horizontal components and the vertical components. But at 40 degrees, we expect more force to be going towards the right. Uh, so to write this answer in vector form, it's going to be 6.89i plus 5.79j. OK, for this uh, triangle here, remember the force has to go on the, on the um, hypotenuse of the right angle triangle create the right angle triangle and hopefully by the time you've got used to a few of these um, they, they're not too bad. In this case here we have to bear in mind that the x-axis goes positively to the right so negatively to the left so this is going to be minus 11.05 11 newtons to the left uh, when we write it in vector form. 
Okay, so uh, a question here, a wordy question. They do like giving you wordy questions. So a box of mass 8 kilograms lies on a smooth horizontal floor. A force of 10 newtons is applied at an angle 30 degrees, causing the box to accelerate horizontally across the floor. Work out the acceleration of the box and calculate the normal reaction between the box and the floor. So we'll talk about the normal reaction in a second, but first let's draw ourselves a diagram. These are all the forces that are going to be acting on my diagram. Anytime you've got a, um, a mass, a particle with a mass, your force of the weight has to go downwards. And then there's going to be some opposite reaction. This is the reaction from the ground back up onto the uh, particle to keep the particle stable in the vertical direction. Now what we're going to do is we're going to now resolve this 10 Newton force here and we're told that it's at an angle to 30 degrees. So in this case here we're going to resolve our forces, we're going to draw in a horizontal component and a vertical component. And the horizontal component is going to be 10 cos 30 and 10 sine 30 for the vertical component. So to find the acceleration we need to consider only the forces horizontally using F equals MA. And if we look at our diagram here, well, we've got three forces acting in the vertical direction, but they're not going to affect the horizontal movement. It's just the horizontal forces that are going to affect the horizontal movement. So it's just 10 cos 30 that's going to go on the side um, of F. And before we get started to write that question, it's a really good habit to get into uh, writing this little symbol here. It gives the reader um, a chance to look at what, where and how you've created the equation you're about to create. So this means here resolving forces in the horizontal direction with to the right as positive. So a capital R and then in brackets an arrow pointing towards the right hand side and that gives the reader a chance to identify uh, how, um, how this equation is created and where it's come from. So in this case here, the only horizontal force is 10 cos 30, so that's the only thing that's going to go on the left. And then it's equal to mass, that's 8 times A, which is acceleration. Divide through by 8 and do the calculation there. And we're going to get 1.08 meters per second squared for the acceleration. Great. So it's really important that you identify and learn how to resolve forces using a right angle triangle. Okay, part B now is to find the normal reaction between the box and the floor. That's basically working out what this value R is. Now generally, and in an easy question, it would just balance out with this 8G force here. It's the force that the table has to provide back up to the particle to keep the particle stationary in that vertical uh, dimension. But in this case here, we've got some of that weight force being relieved by this 10 Newton force, it's kind of like picking it up, but just picking a little bit of that force up. So we've got this 10 sine 30 force here that's acting in the upward direction as well. So in this case here, we're going to be resolving upwards and downwards, but we don't want any acceleration in the vertical um, dimension, so we're going to set A equal to zero. So thinking of the upwards forces, we're going to have R and 10 sine 30, and the downwards force is being 8g. So in this case here, we're going to see the equation of r plus 10 sine 30 minus 8g equals 8 times 0. So the two forces going upwards are positive in this equation, r going up and 10 sine 30 going up, and the force that's going down is a negative in this equation because uh, it's acting in the opposite direction equals 8 times 0. So we can rearrange this and we can calculate the answer of 73.4 newtons. Right then, let's move on to this slightly more tricky question now. So imagine now we're looking down at a particle from above on when the particle is kind of resting on a table. And we've got two strings here that are attached to the particle, pulling it in different directions with different forces. Now the two forces P and Q act upon a particle as shown in the diagram, work out the magnitude and reaction of the resultant force. So that's the force, the total force. When you see the word resultant, the word resultant 
think total amount of force. So we somehow have to combine these two forces together to work out the resultant force. So the way we can do that is we can resolve both the forces and work out the total uh, vertical um, component and the total horizontal component. So in this case here, the resultant forces horizontally will be equal to the addition of 10 cos 45 and 8 cos 30 because they're acting in the same direction. So about 13.99. For the vertical components, we have some force going upwards and some force going downwards. And these two forces, parts of them, will cancel each other out. It looks like if, and if you were to calculate it, the upwards force would be a slight bit bigger than the downward force. Uh, so you can do the upward force, take away the downwards force, because parts of their forces are going to cancel each other out. So eight, 10 sine 45 minus 8 sine 30, you get an answer there of 3.07. And then what we can do is we can visualize it in another way. We can imagine that we've got 13.99 uh, newtons of force acting to the right, 3.707 newtons acting upwards. And we want to work out the total resultant force that's going to be this length on the right angle triangle. So in this case here, the magnitude of this force is going to be 14.3 newtons from a bit of Pythagoras. And we can work out the direction as well. Um, by using a little bit of tan, tan minus 1 of 3.07 divided by 13.99 gives us 12.04. Okay, so that's how we would work out the magnitude of a reaction and the resultant force. Right then, so moving on to the next question, still looking at the particle from above here. Uh, three forces act on the particle as shown, given that the particle is in equilibrium, calculate the magnitude of P and the value of theta. Okay, well we have two variables we need to work out. What we're probably going to have here are simultaneous equations, uh, but we're going to have two equations because we can resolve in the horizontal component and in the vertical component. So let's start to do that. Let's start to resolve all of these arrows. Uh, and we can set the horizontal components equal to each other and the vertical components equal to each other. So resolve all these forces using right angled triangles. So then we're going to resolve horizontally and vertically. If the particle is in equilibrium, then there is no acceleration in any direction. All of these forces here are perfectly cancelling each other out. So therefore, what we can do is we can set leftward forces equal to rightward forces, uh, or you can do it like this where you set all of the forces on one side equal to zero on the other side. So what we've done here is we've set the rightward forces positive, so we're going to have uh, 100 cos 30 and P cos theta, and this 100 cos 45 force here um, is acting in the opposite direction, That's, that gets a negative symbol on it. Um, and my advice would be then just to rearrange this to make p cos theta the subject, and you can work that value out. And then do the same thing, create an equation by resolving the forces in the vertical components now. So we'll have two upward forces that must balance out with a downward force. So in this case here we're going to get an equation that looks similar to this. We've got the downward force set in that equal to the upward force. So we've now got two simultaneous equations. We've got P sine theta equals this and P cos theta equals this. So the first thing we could then do is do equation one divided by equation two. And you can see there we're going to have P's dividing by each other, so they'll cancel out. And then we're going to have sine divided by cos, which will give us tan. Lovely. So we're doing effectively this equation divided by this equation. And then work out the value of that fractional value and do inverse tan of it you get 85.2, substitute that into one of the equations again, either equation 1 or equation 2, and you'll see that P comes out to be 150 newtons. <clears throat> right then, so your turn to have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and try this question out. Right then, let's have a go at this question then. So a box of mass 5 kilograms lies on a horizontal floor. The box is pulled 
by a force of 2 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees, causing the box to accelerate horizontally along the floor. Work out the acceleration of the box. So in this case, all I need to know is my vertical component, but I'll draw both of the components in and quickly work them out. It doesn't take too long to do that. On the adjacent side, I know that this is the cos side because it's adjacent to this uh, 30 degree angle, and I know that this is the sine side because it's the opposite side of the angle. So for part A, working out the acceleration of the box, well, I'm going to be resolving my forces using the right hand direction as positive. The only force I've got acting on my diagram here in the uh, horizontal component is 2 cos 30, and this is going to be set equal to 5 times A. So when I grab my calculator and type in 2 times cos 30 divided by 5, I don't get much acceleration here, it's a very small force, 0 0.06. Lovely. And the next question is to work out the normal reaction of the box with the floor. So that's resolving all of the upwards forces and setting it equal to the downwards forces because I don't want any acceleration in that vertical component. There's a table that's in the way, so I'm not going to have any acceleration. Remember that R force is the force that the table has to provide back up onto the particle to keep the particle stationary in that vertical component. So yeah, we really truly do not want any acceleration in that vertical component. So what I'm going to be doing then is I'm going to be doing it a slightly bit different way to what we've seen previously. I'm going to be setting upwards forces equal to downwards forces. So resolving upwards and downwards, upwards being the first force on the left hand side. So these are both of my upward forces. So these are upward forces. And this must, must balance out with the 5G force uh, as the only downward force. Remember, in A-level maths, we take G equal to 9.8. Don't use the physics uh, value of 9.81. Okay, so let's now subtract uh, 2 sine 30 on the other side. And then all that's left for us to do now is to put this into our calculator. So 5 times 9.8 times 2 sine 30, and we get 51, basically. 51 newtons. Lovely. There we are. So that's the reaction force. That's the answer to part B. The acceleration here is 0 0.06 meters per second squared. There we go then, so have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 5a. It's really important you build up your skills now of resolving forces because by the time we've finished this chapter you're going to be resolving three, maybe four different forces, maybe on a slope um, rather than just on a flat surface. So make sure you've honed those skills now rather than wait until later until you get stuck because you have n you're not completely confident in resolving forces. Great, thanks very much for watching.